Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11. Today we're going to check out the new update that came out with uh, the Zebo 737-800. And uh, it, uh, it's got some pretty cool features they added. We have the uh, split uh, winglets here, the scimitar, and then we also have uh, pulsing landing lights, and, and you can change it to LED lights and some other little small things, as well as some bug fixes. So uh, it has really come a long way, this uh, airplane has. Uh, we are flying from Kansas City to St. Louis. I know it's a short hop um, in the Midwest, but it uh, has ortho scenery the whole way. And number two, it's very challenging coming into St. Louis today. The winds are gusting like 32. It's uh, it's it's pretty pretty insane. We're probably going to have a lot of turbulence along the route as well. Let's head up to the cockpit. All right, we gave the speech and uh, we kind of lied to them. It's not going to be smooth at all. I can guarantee you that uh, the the atmosphere is pretty disturbed today. Let's go ahead and uh, get ready to push back. So all we have to do now, uh, let me get you a little situated on what we're doing here. Here is our legs uh, page right there. I'm going to put this into plan mode and we're going to step through it together. We're doing uh, the lakes uh, to departure out of Kansas City. And we're going to go direct to Alpha November X-Ray. Uh, normally, you just do vectors to that, but we're just going to do Alpha November X-Ray. Not a big deal. Uh, let's step through that. There it is right there. We got a Frank intersection, and then we go to uh, Columbia, uh, Missouri, which is COU there. Uh, we're going to fly over that, and then we'll do the Kayla 3 arrival into St. Louis. So arrive at uh, Kayla intersection at 11,000 at or above. Decel over Big Mac. We'll go to Gibby. Uh, then Ozzy and then Snyder and then we do our arrival uh, once we get to flood we're gonna go to um, Vectors, so we're just gonna vector ourselves manually not a big deal there And then once we do that we'll be uh, picking up the ILS 30 left approach into st. Louis winds are out of the north there um, And uh, they they seem to be pretty mean looking so we'll have to see how that's going to go uh, Regardless, it should be a challenge. Let's go ahead and flip that back to map mode. We're in 10. Let's put it to 20 I'm good on that side Flight directors are on. Uh, auto throttles can be armed. We have uh, V2 in the MCP right there, 148, 10,000 on uh, departure. And we have our heading of 010 in case we need it. Let's go ahead and uh, arm these guys. Those are good to go. Uh, RTO is good. Let's just do some cleanup stuff before start. Uh, we have flight deck door. Oh, yeah. We needed to tell her we're ready to go. So all we got to do to do that is turn on the anti-collision light. And she'll be like, oh, okay, are we going? Like, yeah, we're going to go. And uh, we're ready to push. Just wait for her to say her little spiel. All right, we've got everyone strapped in. Give us a ring if you need anything. Fantastic. There she was. All right, we're good to go. She's going to close that door like she just did right there. We're going to turn that. Uh, uh, it's all good to go. We're ready to push. Let's go ahead and release the parking brake. They're going to pull that away, and they're going to push us out of here. And you may start engine. We are clear to start engine, so what we are going to do is we are going to turn off the packs. And we are going to have air bleeds. That looks good right there. That's what we want. Electrical panel looks good as well, and we are on the right ignition today. Let's just go ahead and flip uh, engine two to ground. And we're going to have the start valve open right there. They're starting to give a little spiel back there. Here we are, we're looking at N2. We want 25% on N2 on the right engine. Waiting for that to climb. And with this update, I've noticed it does climb faster than it used to. It's a lot more realistic now, so that's that's kind of nice. Or that, or it's a placebo effect, and I just haven't flown it in a while. There's 25. Add that fuel. And we'll start the other one once we finish here. Pushing back. All right, they pushed us back. Let's go ahead and set the parking brake for them, and we are going to start engine number one. Stand by. Make sure our fuel pumps are good to go. We have no fuel in the center tank. Got 8,000 on each side there. That looks good. All right. We have N2. Starting to fire up. They're starting to do the safety demonstration. It's going to be a short taxi over to runway one left for our departure today. Won't take very long at all. There we go. Disconnect and we'll look for the hand signals. It's all fired up. 
if he listened to what I had to say, which I don't know if he did. Take just a moment to be sure that your seatbelts are fastened, your seat bags and tray tables should not be in their full upright lock positions for takeoff. Again, the aisle will always completely clear at your feet. We never anticipated change in the cabin pressure, folks. If one were to occur, four yellow oxygen masks will fall automatically from a compartment above your seat. All right, we have two good engines. That looks good to me. Let's go ahead and put them on Gen, just like that. And we can now turn the packs back on. So they have AC back there. We're going to turn our probes on. I'm just doing my flows right now, and then we'll go over it with the checklist as always. That looks good. Pressurization panel is good. We can turn the APU bleed off, and we can kill the ABU. We don't need it anymore. The APU, not ABU, APU. There we go. All right, fantastic. Checklist and procedures. Uh, we already did pushback transponder. We can turn that guy over to TARA. There we go. Uh, as needed. Parking brake is good. Hydraulic pumps are on. We're all good to go with that guy. And we're going to do uh, before taxi. Generators one and two. Man, it's hard to speak today. Uh, probe heat is on. We just did it. Wing anti-ice is needed. Engine anti-ice is needed. Pack switches are set to auto. Isolation valve was on auto as well. APU bleed is off. Engine start switch goes to continuous. In case we have an engine out on departure. There we go. Engine start levers are at idle. Ground equipment's clear. That's verified. Flap lever set to take off. It's going to be fa flaps five today. Three notches of that. That'll be good there. And then flight controls. We're going to go ahead and do a flight control check real fast. Systems are right here. Uh, we got the left side. Neutral right side. Neutral back. Neutral forward. Neutral, and we do have a working rudder as well. And we just hit uh, that guy one more time. And we want a blank DU. There we go. Checked and checked before taxi checklist is complete. Now we can do um, the next will be takeoff. So before entering the runway, which is going to be a short one, like I said. So taxi light comes on. We can release the parking brake. And we are rolling. Let's get on out of here. Like I said, we're going to make it right here on Delta, and we'll take that over to runway one left. So we're pretty much ready to go. So we just do the wing light, and then I'll uh, let them know we're ready to go. Clear for departure. There it is. Clear for departure, as you just heard right there. There's the ding. And they're going to let them know. So departure runway is Clear verified. Is Have a good flight. All right. Thank you. Uh, entering the runway will be strobe lights, so we can turn the strobe lights on. Now, this is what's really cool, the new strobes are the new ones that, um, they're the LED strobes, so they're, they, they blink very slow. Um, that's good to go. Wing light is on. Logo can come on as well. It doesn't matter. It is one of those kind of deals. Landing lights came on. There they are. Runway turn off. So we'll just turn everybody on. That's good to go. Uh, all right. Transponder's good. We can make sure that we're on weather radar, just in case. Uh, fixed landing lights are good. Thrust levers will be 40%. We're pretty much just going to rock and roll on out of here is what we're going to do. We're going to bring them up to 40%, uh, and then we will engage Toga, which we can hit by the mic button right there. Pretty incredible that this airplane is free, I have got to say. I'll give you a taxi shot so you can see the new uh, LED strobes as we line up. Alright, lining up on runway one left. And we're gonna be ready for it. There was the uh weather being updated. We're gonna be ready for some gusts on out of here. It looks a little a little gusty here. Altimeter 3027, so we have a nice uh high pressure system. Alright, let's go ahead and add that power. And we're past 40 there, so add toga. And we're gonna bring these all the way up. Airspeed is alive. 80 knots. Cross check. D1, 
V1. Rotate. Positive rate. There it is. Gear up, please. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's a little windy. Rocking us around a little bit here on our departure. 400. There's 400 feet. And hand fly it for right now. Go for a thousand, and then we'll uh, start a turn to the right. One thousand. There's a thousand feet right there. We'll start a turn to the right. Keep the flaps in there, of course. Using our trim as we need to here. Let's do a 20 degree turn. Nothing too crazy. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday. Hope your weekend is off to a great start. If you're watching this on uh, the day it came out. Looking good here. Man, that is definitely some gusty winds happening right there. It doesn't look bad on the, on the display, but let me assure you, it is pretty interesting. Okay, we're going like this. Level off here for a minute. Let's clean the airplane up. So flaps are going to come in. Auto brakes are going to be set to off. Landing gear lever position to off. There we go. And we can start our turn now to the right. And we're going to get on course here. Still hand flying it. Because that's the fun of the flight sim. Man, I did a flight uh, in real life. Um, I flew on Southwest uh, from Orlando to St. Louis. And uh, that captain that day was amazing. I have never been thrown around in a plane so much <laughs> it was crazy and then on the departure we had some uh, storms on the south side and it got real interesting real fast all right we're almost to that magenta line so we're looking good there let's go ahead and engage the autopilot we're climbing to 10,000 feet we have l nav and uh, v nav speed lit up right there so the airplane is going to make some corrections as it needs to there we can do our uh Takeoff stuff here. Okay, flaps are retracted. We're already on that. So, we, yeah, this is all good. This is just double checking to make sure everything we did was right. VNAV mode is set. Autopilot's needed. Engine start switch goes back to auto. There we go. And we'll be making the left turn here shortly. There it is right there. Auto brake is off. Landing gear lever is off. And uh, landing lights are on right now. We're at 6,500. We can turn these guys off. Taxi lights come off as well. And that is complete. Eight thousand two hundred. As we get closer to ten thousand feet, let's go ahead and just bring it up to our final altitude of flight level two five zero. That's going to be our cruise. It did get a little uh, little bumpy there for a second, but it looks like it's smoothing out. It might be okay on our departure here today. Crossing through 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and turn our landing lights off. There they go. And man, it got bumpy in a hurry. We're looking good here right now. We're outside of Alpha November X-Ray, and there's our top of climber right there. Uh, anything else here? We're good on all of that. Next is going to be our climb cruise checklist, which is going to be above 10,000 feet. We just did. Passenger signs are on. Transition altitude be the next one, 18,000 feet. We're good there. Tracking uh, all right to ANX, and uh, we're flying through the clouds right now.
All right, crossing through 16,000 feet. We're just about over Alpha November X-ray. As you can see right here, if I zoom in, we're just about to make that left-hand turn. There it is right there. So now we're headed to Frank intersection, waiting for 18,000 feet, which is coming up very soon. You guys been, uh, have you, any of you checked out that, uh, the uh, Jake Paul series that uh, Shane Dawson did? That was uh, really, really well done. And I agree there was uh, some people that said, uh, you know, this that's that's the stuff that YouTube's made of. It is. And, and, and Shane got a lot of shit, but I got to say, honestly, it was uh, no different than if you watch something on TLC or, you know, a Netflix docuseries or something like that, as far as like, uh, you know, the dramatic music and, and things like that. So I think Shane just brought his production level up and uh, it really showed, man, we are hitting some turbulence right there, aren't we? Oh, we're okay there. Just a little clear air turbulence. Uh, really cool. If you're wondering how I get these effects, if I go to XP Realistic Pro, this is the program I use. Um, one of the new things they added is clear air turbulence now, which is actually really neat. Um, I think it is environment. Yeah, clear air turbulence right there. They added that. So you actually do get some bumps here and there uh, on your flight, which is really neat. I do like that. Standard is set. Altimeter cross checked is verified because I have it set that way. Four top of descent will be mod route for arrival, and then we'll check our RNP. We're all good on that for right now, 19,100 feet. And uh, just hitting some bumps on the way up. Like I said, the uh, atmosphere is a little angry today, so it's going to be windy coming into St. Louis, and it's probably going to be bumpy all the way to uh, our destination. So we're going to keep that seatbelt sign on for now. Twenty-two thousand three hundred feet, climbing for twenty-five thousand total. Look how beautiful that is over there. I love the cloud holes. That looks really, really neat with the uh, sunlight hitting the ground there. Beautiful farmlands here in Missouri. Yesterday on uh, Friday, we went to the courthouse uh, and got our marriage license. So we actually have our marriage license now. Um, I do have my ring. Um, if I wanted to wear it, right, pretty much almost technically married but we just have to do the ceremony on the 31st of October uh, and we will end up uh, getting uh, you know this, the witness signatures and then it will be uh, made pretty much 100% uh, so very close I think like 11 days or something until the wedding which is going to be awesome uh, and I know some people may be wondering about the wedding we're, we're not doing anything absolutely insane we're not um, going to be doing the traditional style wedding. It's not like a church wedding. Thousand it's to go. Not, thousand to go. Got it. Uh, it's nothing to do with that. It's, uh, you know, we go to a beach. We get married on a beach. There's no production at all. Um, it's very low key. It's very uh, cheap, <laughs> to say the least, which we have no problem with at all. Uh, when I was a DJ, I, I actually DJ weddings for uh, about a year, I think, is when I worked for a company called Millennial Music in uh, St. Louis or DJ Weddings and I just didn't like them so much but apart from that uh, they're just extremely expensive for no reason um, you know for a night you know everybody's like oh, they're banking on this oh you're never gonna forget it never gonna forget it it's like yeah I know but uh, I don't want to pay you know 20 to 50 thousand I've seen some couples spend over 50 thousand dollars on a wedding it's just insanity absolute insanity enjoy the one you love and hang out with them so we're doing a low-key one uh, we're getting some wings catered from our local place uh, and then we are going to I think we're gonna do Auntie Anne's as well pretzels uh, for catering those are the two places they're not it's not really catering as well Auntie Anne's will be but the other place is just we're buying like 200 wings from them uh, should be good guest list is just right around 30 people so we're having a reception here at our house. Our house is, uh, is has plenty of space for it. Um, and we're going to do karaoke and have some drinks and have fun. Uh, I know some people are sad I won't be live streaming or recording the wedding. It's just, you know, it's a personal thing. I don't really want to uh, to, uh, to to do that or, or worry about, you know, doing things like that. Before top of the we're good on that stuff. 
My mind's always got, you know what we didn't get? The chronometer, of course. Ah, it doesn't matter. Not a big deal. That's the one thing I always, always forget every time. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be turning this uh, seatbelt sign off anytime soon. It is just nonstop bumps all the way. All right, we just turned over Frank, and now we're headed to Columbia, COU there. Charlie Oscar uniform. And, uh, yeah, the winds are showing, like, uh, you know, look how sporadic they are. They're, they're getting tossed around, but it's saying seven knots, eight knots. I don't think that that is correct because our ground speed is uh, right now 437. I looked on the, uh, the uh, weather thing over there, and the winds are a lot more rampant than that. If we look on our cruise page here, we should be able to see what we expected. Actual wind right there. Okay. So it, it's saying that that's what it is. Um, but whenever I looked it up, it was it was like 32 knots uh, at this flight level. So I don't know what the discrepancy there is. Um, but regardless, the, the change, the constant changing there is just absolutely rocking us right now. We're getting hit by some good turbulence. So uh, like I said, I don't think fast and seatbelt signs are going to come off on this flight. I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, Awesome, awesome clouds. Now, real fast while we're up here, uh, I use the program Ultra Weather XP. That's what I'm using right now. Now, when I'm doing uh, outside view shots, I'm like at sun and stuff, I'll turn the cloud shadow power um, down because uh, I normally keep it about 92. I'll put it about right there. Uh, 92, which gives you those nice cloud shadows that we, you've seen in the other shots. Um, but these are all the power, or, or the power. <laughs> I saw lights power. These are all the settings I use for Ultra Weather XP. It's a fantastic program. Um, it's the main graphics mod I use. Sky Color 3, you know, manual mist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are all the things that I have. If you guys have uh, this program and you know some tips maybe I don't know about, be sure to let me know. I do like how you can change uh, the, the colors of, the, of the, the water and stuff, which actually I, I'm not near the ocean. I could have turned to brown or something so it would look like a river, but that's okay. Um, Ambient sound, I turned that down to 22% because that can be a little bit noxious after a while. It really can. Um, but yeah, here you go. Here, you're seeing some uh, good cloud uh, shadows right there in that hole. That is pretty darn neat. Um, let's get, uh, let's get, let's do our level off. We'll say hello to everybody back there.
We are 42 nautical miles to Kayla. There's our top of descent right there, just about 15 miles out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, uh, the um, uh, in, in previous videos on the legs page, if you look down here, we've got our last one around 2,171. We're just going to set it to 2,100. Uh, that'll be for the best. And we'll make sure that that is set here. Not too long of a flight today, like I said. It wouldn't be that bad. Ooh, down one more there. We're just about to 10 there, getting close. So what we'll do is go to the descent page uh, right there. And we have descend now. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, it's pretty close to being good there. So let's go ahead and descend now. Hit execute on that guy. And we will begin our initial descent into St. Louis. And we can see there's our VNAV right there. And it will capture it. But we are doing our descent. Um, we probably won't have to use, because we're staying ahead of the airplane, uh, and our cost index today is only 20, we're probably going to uh, only use the speed brakes once we get down closer to 10,000 feet to slow it down. Um, I don't even think that we'll have a pop-up on our FMC for any uh, drag needed. I just don't think it's going to be needed today. Uh, but uh, apart from that, we'll put uh, auto brakes over, oops, to two. Yeah, we'll use auto brakes too. And let's go ahead and do our uh, information here. 111.5 should be already good to go. I have 111.5, 111.5, that is set. I did that. Uh, let's just probably edit it out. Um, and then I've got flaps and speed. So we're going to be 147.30. So one, or 30, 147. So 30 slash 147. And we'll put that right there. Wind correction is going to be plus five by uh, default. And 304 on the course. I already got that set uh, from earlier. So that is good to go. I actually did that on the pre-flight. I, I tend to do that sometimes before we even pushed out of Kansas City. I just had the course there. So it's one less thing I have to remember as a single pilot. Legs page looking good here. And we're tracking quite nicely to Kayla Intersection. 260 knots. Uh, but we are doing, you know, 373 over the ground, so we're still good. Look at that. That's beautiful out there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Let them know we're starting our descent. All right, I just got an update on uh, the weather in St. Louis. Winds are 310 at 18, gusting to 34 knots. Now, we'll see if uh, it's going to do that in X-Plane. Uh, but, yeah, gusting to 34. 10 statute miles of visibility, clear skies. Uh, ultimate 3010. So, at 18,000, we'll change that over to 3010. And peak wind was 32034. Wow. So that's where they got the gust of three, four right there. So, I mean, it's looking like it's going to be pretty mean. It really is. And uh, clear sky below 12,000 feet. So it should be, should be uh, interesting. As we are still descending here, we can double check uh, on the descent procedure. We've got pressurization, landing altitude is set. We've got system enunciator. We'll hit the recall here. That's good to go. Approach ref page, VREF is entered. We have uh, radio barrel minimums is needed. Navigation radio is set and verified. Did all of that. Auto brakes are set to two. That is good to go. Descent checklist is complete. Next will be approach. And uh, that will be when we get closer to 10,000 feet or so. Coming up on 18,000 right now. So that's going to go over to 3010. Oh, man. And it got uh, real nice there. It got real nice. Oh, set it too soon. Looks like it's smoothing out down here at about 17,000 feet. That's not too bad. Oh, we finally, finally got some, uh, some clear air here. That is nice. But that wind is blowing us off course a little bit. Oh, no, we're just going to be making left on the Big Mac. Never mind. We're almost over Kayla intersection now. And look, see, we haven't had to use any drag 
So 11,000 at or above, and uh, that is fine. We can be at 17,000 for that. The airplane, uh, we're, we're going to be landing on runway uh, 30 left, so it knows the airplane. Uh, what am I saying? Oh, the airplane knows that we don't have to get down that quick. Uh, that would be if we were landing on uh, the one twos. This is a much faster approach. Okay, we're headed to Big Mac and then Gibby after that. So 11,000, 10,000, 8,000, 7,000. It's just a nice little descent on down there. We have our profile looking great. RMP is wonderful and uh, not a problem at all. We won't have to put our flaps in until we're on our downwind leg. Uh, once it gets closer down uh, to the speeds that uh, we need to get at, but going to be a windy one. I can tell you that. Now we should have, if we turn the airports on, actually, uh, Spirit of St. Louis Airport should be around here somewhere. It's up here off our right hand side, actually. It's right underneath those clouds back there, but you can almost, almost make it out. All right, it's not calling for any drag, but we are going to put it out. It's going to help the airplane slow down a lot more efficiently to 250 knots. As we get closer, we're at 11,000 feet right now, and the airplane is starting to shallow its descent, so it will slow down. That is so cool. There's O'Fallon, Missouri over there, and we can't make out Spirit of St. Louis. It's just off to the right out there. Uh, it's right over there. We might see it once we break through these clouds a little bit. We're waiting for 10,000 feet so we turn those landing lights on. If flaps 15 landing needed, a ground proximity flap, we're not worried about that. We'll just check it at or above 10,000 feet will be the fixed landing lights. Like I said, we're almost there, 800 feet to that. And now you can see our arrival looking very nice here. Let's go ahead and bring it in a little bit. 20 nautical miles. I like that. It looks very nice. And we're at 260 knots right now, as you can see. But once we get to our initial altitude there, like right there, we're looking good. I'm going to go ahead and bring the speed brakes forward. Don't need them right now. Airplane is going to be just fine, I believe. They're going to keep trying to get that slowed down. Yeah, look at the winds changing direction rapidly. Now, I don't think that that is correct. I think it's going to be a little bit more windy than that, according to the, uh, the METAR at least. All right, almost there to 250. So it's on the decel now. We'll have another decel once we get over Snyder. So it's almost to 250. Look at that. See how it worked out just fine there. 10,000 feet lane lights are going to come on. And uh, we are getting close to Snyder. We'll make that right-hand turn. We should be able to make out the airport now. Actually, if we go over to our first officer side, we can make out... Uh, Spirit of St. Louis. There it is right there. There's two six left. Right in to Spirit of St. Louis. There it is. Right there. And that's Highway 40. It runs along there. And all the way out that way. It's a little hazy. No problemo.
All right, we are on pretty much a left downwind for runway 30 left, which is right over there. That's Lambert International Airport there. We turned over Snyder. Got some cool views. Airplane is still in a decel right now to 210 knots. Once we get to that, we will put down uh, flaps one. But we're not worried about it now. So let's go ahead and continue our approach procedure. So that is good to go. Passenger signs are on. We never turned them off. Altimeter is set. Uh, RMP is good. Let's go ahead and we'll be doing a landing ILS approach on 30 left. So that'll be app roll mode and all that stuff will be good to go. Uh, and we won't have to do that until we get to the end. Like I said, we're going to be at the end of flood. We're going to be going to vector. So let's go ahead and get our heading bug where we want it. It's going to be about a heading of one, two, four. So there we go right there. And once we get closer to flood, we can just whip, switch right over to heading select mode, which we're going to be doing here very shortly. You see that wind is definitely kicking our butt a little bit. Drag required. You got it. Let's go ahead and bring that baby on out. Slow this puppy down. So it went a little bit of drag. How about that? Okay. So that is slowing down. And now we're going to go to heading select mode. There we go. We should be able to see downtown St. Louis right off our left. There it is right there. There's the arch. Union Station right there. There's the Cardinal Stadium right over there. Good old St. Louis, man. It was, uh, it was really cool because I hadn't been to St. Louis in a year, uh, actually, since I moved down to Florida. It had been that long. I've had some family come up and visit me or come down here and visit me in Orlando, but I hadn't been back to St. Louis in forever. So coming in here, we actually got to do the uh, this arrival uh, on the other side and we got to see the arch. It was really cool. It's always home, you know. That won't change. All right, bring that speed brake in and let's go ahead and go flaps one. It helps slow the airplane down here. And basically what we do is they're going to vector us out over the river. Uh, and we're going to be way above any traffic near the downtown airport. We're actually going to turn over the downtown airport and we'll be set up on a base leg so we can get our 45 degree intercept for the ILS. But we're not going to have to worry about that anymore. Let's go ahead and try to get this speed brakes to arm. Oop, there they were. There they are. They're armed. We have the green light. Fantastic. And we'll do uh, flaps on uh, on our call. We don't need to do it right now. We're just maintaining good speed here. There's the arch in the riverfront. And then that is downtown airport right there. We're well below the clouds. Okay. So we're going to be making a left turn just about now. So let's go ahead and change our heading over to this way. I'll do one uh, zero three four will be just fine. That'll work just fine right there. Right over downtown airport. Let's go ahead and set flaps to two. Continue to help slow the airplane down as we need to. Everything's looking good right here. All we got to do now is uh, get a little closer. Once we get a little closer, we're going to start our intercept to Joyce and we're going to arm the localizer here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead of about this will work here nicely. Oop, didn't want to change that. About three, five, five is pretty good right there. We've got the glide slip starting to come in here. We've got the ILS, DME, all that is right there. 18KY304. Lining up good here. We can go ahead and arm it, the localizer. And there is downtown St. Louis from this side. Okay. We should be grabbing the localizer quite soon, actually. Yep. It's picking up Joyce right there, which we're not worried about. We could go direct to Joyce if we wanted to, but we're not going to. We're going to wait for the localizer to come to life. 
And we can actually go to flaps five here. As this happens. Help the airplane even more. So there's flaps five coming in. Localizer is alive. Sunlight over the water there. That's cool. There's the I-55, 64 interchange, all that, and 55 goes out this way, and then the racetrack's off on our right-hand side, actually. But we've got to land an airplane, so we're not worried about that stuff. All right. So remember, our V-Ref's going to be 147 plus 5, so... 52... I should probably go a little bit more than that, honestly, because it's going to be going to be interesting. All right, sweet. 175 looking good here. We can go ahead and go flaps 10 here shortly as well. It's going to help the airplane slow down even more because this is coming to an end very soon. It's verified. Glide slope live. Let's go ahead and do auto approach. That is set. And uh, we actually will put the gear down. That's going to go before we actually grab the glide slope. Normally you do glide slope, gear down, and then flaps um, 15, as you can see right there. And then, fla uh, yep, let's go to the continuous, which we're good on that. Speed brakes armed, looking great. And we can go ahead and go gear down. Like I said, we have to do it a little early because of this approach in particular. But I know where they put the gear down on this approach anyway, so it kind of helps. Flaps 15. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait for it to grab that, and then we're going to get our IAS. And we're going to set that. Let's do about 155 just to be on the safe side, because it is going to be gusting pretty good. I'd rather have more speed than less in these kind of conditions. And flaps 25. Wide slips coming in nice. Gear is down. We have three green. Flaps are 15. Engines continuous. Speed brakes armed. Let's let them know we're landing. Doing my checks here. There we go. We're starting to grab it now. We'll get it here in a minute. We'll be on our MCP speed soon. To his decision height, not worried about it. Man, I can't speak today. To his in to his in height? There she goes. She just said it. And there it is right there. So let's go ahead and do uh let's do 155. Because it is gusting around there. Look at that. It's a direct cross when it's showing right there. Holy crap. Let's go flaps 30. And landing checklist. Oops. Already had it going there. That's uh, good to go. Uh, flaps are good. MCP missed approach. Good to go. We set to 3,000. Oh, here it is. 1,000 feet stabilized. Missed approach altitude set. All right. Well, that'll be good enough right there then. I'm not really worried about it. Let's go ahead and turn our auto throttles off first. I like to get these nice and synced up. Yeah, you can see we're getting beat around a little bit. Just a tad. And we'll go boom there. And I'm going to get hit that guy. It's going to disengage the autopilot. Landing, I have the airplane. We'll make sure these guys are on. Yep, we're good here. It is bumpy coming in. I knew it was going to be. I had a feeling. Be a little high here. Bring that nose down. Trending that way, isn't it? And we don't want to over control the airplane, especially in windy conditions like this. We're going to throw the crab out once we get over the runway. With the left rudder. Boy, that is windy. <laughs> it is bumpy. It's it's more turbulence than anything else. We're doing okay. Oh, there's that wind. Went over the numbers. There's the other crab out there. And we are down. Let it go down there. Reverses come out. We are reversing. Let it come to a stop here. 80 knots. There's 80. There's 60. Go ahead and clear them. 
That thing likes to jump out of reverse mode over and over. I don't. It's a little bit of a bug on this plane. Nope. Keep it going. There we go. We're okay. Keep the speed up. We'll make a right turn here. And we're gonna take the high speed echo down to where we need to go. All right. Yeah, it was rocking and rolling all the way in. Let's bring our flaps in. That looks good there. The landing lights can come off. Turn offs off. We have taxi on. Let's start the APU. One, two, three, four. And we can go strobes off as well. Turn our wing light off. Don't need that on anymore. We'll leave the uh, logo light on. We'll be fine with that. Okay, I'll make a right turn here and cross runway three zero left and we'll be direct to our gate from there. As always, been a pleasure having you guys aboard today. It's been fun. Nice little short hop from uh, Kansas City to St. Louis. It's one of my favorite ones, honestly. Um, you, you, in any airplane, you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of experience uh, in a short amount of time with the airplane. And uh, we're okay there. We do have APU ready to go on Jen. We won't have to do that till we get to the actual gate. So we'll go ahead and taxi into the gate. at the gate parking brake is pulled we can go to apu gen and that can come on as well and we are good to go to kill those engines like that and then we can do our anti-collision light off wing light should be off as well and we are good ladies and gentlemen welcome to st louis we made it and those are not auto gates they're not going to come out and attach so some things i wanted to go over real fast before we get out of here Ground services, you've got, you know, GPU, set chocks, better pushback. You can operate from there, which is really cool. The Avatab has come a very long way. You can go to airports here, and we could put, like, in uh, uh, St. Louis, okay, S-T-L, and hit uh, enter there. There it is right there. Hit next, and check it out. You've got all your information you need. This is fantastic when you're flying online. You have uh, all of your frequencies at your disposal, which is amazing. You can also bring up charts if you want to. Uh, you can um, go to routes and look that up. Uh, you can do, you know, KSTL again and hit check mark there. And arrival would be, say, like, we're going to MCI. And there you go. Look at that. It gives you a route. It gives you the distance. It is so cool. Map uh, mode opens the map up. You can actually zoom in and out of uh, the... The map here with the zoom in and out functions which is really cool i love the map that's really nice to have uh and uh that's pretty much all of that uh i can't think of anything else i wanted to show with the new updates um we had the passengers turned off and stuff like that but uh, if you're one about aircraft config uh, there's chalks on startup if you want it uh anything else i don't think so uh optional accessories so if you go into display options this is where you can do all that stuff you can do long LED strobes, uh, the split scimitar, winglets, satcoms. You can turn those on, actually. I don't have uh, textures on them, but I'll put it on both so you can see them from outside. There they are right there on top. So if those were textured uh, blue, they would actually um, be cool. It'd be the little Wi-Fi guys there on top, which uh, would make more sense with this airplane uh, in the Southwest configuration. So that's pretty neat. You can do that, and you can do this all in real time. And then next, you got landing light pulses if you want. Uh, and the lane lights can be halogen or LED. And you can even turn the HUD on, but it does not function at this time. It does not. I think they're going to do it eventually, but it does. 
uh, have that option to have it modeled in there, which is really cool. Well, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of X-Plane 11. I will see you all on a future flight. Take care.